Welcome back everyone, I'm Eric from Rare Candy and here today we are back continuing our video series where we take a look into the past of the Pokemon trading card game and go over different cards and mechanics that I personally really want to see make a comeback at some point. Now we already did upload one part of this series and we have several more on the way as well so if you guys haven't seen any of those I will have links down below in the description to each of those videos as they do get uploaded. But for better or for worse, the Pokemon trading card game is a game that does tend to recycle mechanics over and over throughout the years, whether it's in the form of bringing back cards in their entirety or just mildly updating them in kind of like a new context. It can definitely be important to look in the past of the game because a lot of times that's an indicator of new cards we're eventually going to get. And that definitely applies to this list. Not only are these cards that I want to see, but several of these are no strangers to getting reprints of their own as well. For this video, we're going to be taking a look at 10 item cards I want to see make a return to the game. And largely speaking, no particular order. The only thing we're going to be excluding is going to be Pokemon tool cards, because while they are item cards technically, we are going to do a separate countdown for those as well but just not in today's video. But before we move any further, we actually do need to go over the term item throughout the TCG and how it's changed because that actually does affect the eligibility of certain cards being able to potentially appear or not appear on this countdown list. Supporter cards did not actually exist until the e-reader era of the game, meaning that all non-stadium and non-Pokemon tool cards functioned exactly like the item cards we have today. Even draw-based ones such as Professor Oak. Also, after the emergence of supporter cards, items were still simply known as trainer cards, lasting all the way up until the beginning of the black and white era of the game. And what all this means is that these trainer cards that simply predated the item term are all eligible to appear on this list, so long as they function in the same way that item cards do today. Meaning that a card like Legend Box from the Heart Gold Soul Silver era of the game will be eligible for this list, but a card like Professor Oak will not be just because that card, if reprinted today, would more than likely be printed as a supporter card like we've seen right now with Professor's Research. But if you do wind up enjoying this video series, be sure to smack that like button as it genuinely really does help get this video seen by more Pokemon TCG fans on YouTube. And I know there's been a ton of item cards throughout the history of the game, so no doubt my list here is going to probably differ from yours. So at the end of this video, be sure to comment down below. Let me know what items that you want to see personally return to the game as well. But getting into the actual countdown, before we get to my personal 10 picks, we do have two different honorable mentions chosen by our patrons at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. And the first one is going to be Ultra Ball. This one was chosen by our patrons G and also Vince Mahalo. They both had uh, similar thoughts on this one. But Ultra Ball is a card that, uh, you know, hasn't been gone for too long or... Or at least in my head, it doesn't feel like it's been gone that long. But it's, uh, you know, it was a staple card basically ever since it was first printed in Dark Explorers all the way up to the day it finally rotated. But it was an item that said, discard two cards from your hand and then search your deck for a Pokemon. Pretty straightforward stuff. You get to get any Pokemon in your deck. Right now we have Quick Ball in the format, which is very, very similar. But this is even more flexible because we can also grab, of course, things like Stage 1, Stage 2s, even Pokemon V Max. And like we've seen with Zacian variants, sometimes the discard effect is good because we can toss away things like metal energies in the current format to accelerate with things like metal saucer, or imagine discarding your mad party Pokemon to fuel your attacks with that deck. So just like in today's format, back when this card was originally printed, there was no shortage of decks that actually liked this discarding effect as well. Now, I did opt to exclude Ultra Ball from my personal 10 picks, just because I actually think, largely speaking, our search options are pretty decent right now. But nevertheless, Ultra Ball, absolutely fantastic card, a staple for the longest time. And I definitely could see why people would be itching for it to come back into the game as well. And for our second honorable mention, we have Junk Arm. This was selected by our patron, Duckwood dynasty and much like with our last honorable mention this one also has you discard two cards from your hand but this one allows you to get a trainer card from your discard pile show it to your opponent and put it into your hand so junk arm fantastic card originally actually didn't see widespread play but as this card got deeper into its lifespan we started to see more and more in decks as four ofs across the board so think about this in the context of today's format. Now Junk Arm can basically act as your fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth copy of Metal Saucer, Crushing Hammer, Switch, Rare Candy, making this card very, very impactful if it actually was brought back into the game. Now, much like with Ultra Ball, this was a card I considered adding to my personal 10 picks, but I worry Evolution decks might struggle a little bit more to find the space for a four count of a card like this, whereas other decks like Zacian variants not only get a huge boost from a card like this, but they also just naturally have the space for it. So I think this card, if printed, might more heavily benefit big basic decks, which is something I'm 
Really not a big fan of, and that influences a lot of the picks on my list. But nevertheless, John Karma is a fantastic card. And again, much like with Ultra Ball, I definitely see why people would be excited for this card to make a comeback at some point. That's going to wrap up our two honorable mentions. Like I said, guys, these are both selected by our patrons at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. So if you want to make it into future entries of this series and have your picks get heard, definitely check us out over there. Not only will you get to make an appearance in future videos like this, but also it genuinely really does help support this channel in the process. But getting into my personal 10 picks, kicking things off in the 10 spot, we have Special Charge. Special Energies do tend to be cards that very rarely get good recovery options for them. And so when Special Charge was initially printed all the way back in Steam Siege, this was a card I was really excited to see. and really gives a boost to those decks based around things like Double Colorless Energy back in its day. Or now in today's day of the games, we have things like Twin Energy and Triple Acceleration Energy. And with Triple Acceleration Energy being on its way out, I think it's actually going to be very difficult for decks like Mad Party, just as an easy example, to persist without very clunky energy engines in its place. But if we get something like Special Charge back, that kind of remedies that whole situation. And even outside of Twin Energy, we actually have some of the best Special Energy the game has seen in quite some time with other things like Capture Energy, Speed Lightning Energy, Horror Psychic Energy, the list goes on right now. So having some form of recovery would definitely be the perfect timing with how much of an emphasis recent sets have been given to these Special Energies. And so Special Charge, I think this would be a fantastic card to see back really crossing my fingers for it to make an appearance at some point. Next up for the number nine spot, we have PAL Hand Extension. So this says you may only use this card if you have more prize cards left than your opponent. Move one energy card attached to the defending Pokemon to another of your opponent's Pokemon or switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with one of the defending Pokemon, your opponent chooses the defending Pokemon to switch. Now, just some quick clarification, back when this card was printed, the game did support a doubles format with multiple active Pokemon. So when it says your opponent chooses the defending Pokemon to switch, that's what it's in reference to. You are still the one that chooses the target on the bench to switch. So just some quick clarification. I know that wording might look a little bit weird in today's state of the game. So spoiler alert, if you did not see the previous video I made in this series looking at 10 abilities I wish to come back, uh, there was an effect very similar to this in that video. So it should come as no surprise that I would also include power hand extension here in this video as well. I'm a big fan of cards that enable comeback mechanics and that punish very aggressive decks and give those slower, more methodical setup based decks a chance to really thrive and exist alongside these hyper aggressive decks like things like Eternatus, like Zacian variants, etc. Especially too in the case of single prize decks and especially stage two decks that really find it difficult to take a turn off of playing a draw supporter to play something like Boss's Orders. Something like this would be a big help just because those types of decks very frequently are relying on using their supporter for turn to finding their next attacker on the next turn. And also alternatively, there was counter catcher. It lacked the energy moving effect of power hand extension. But other than that, it was largely the same. And I would be perfectly fine with either of these cards coming back into the game, especially now that we have things like Oranguru rotated and control archetype sort of taking a hit recently. A card like this, I don't think is quite as toxic as it may have once been, you know, maybe a year or so ago. The next item I want to see make a return is going to be Pokey Drawer Plus. This one says you may play two Pokey Drawer Plus at the same time. If you play one, you draw a card, but if you play two, search your deck for up to two cards, put them in your hand, then shuffle your deck. Now I will admit this slot is somewhat of a cheat as I'm just more so looking for these types of mechanics to make a return overall, whether it's Something like this, Custom Catcher, Puzzle of Time, etc. Any of these cards that allow you to play multiple of them at the same time, and depending on how many you do, grant you different sorts of effects. I'm opting to include Pokey Jar because I think it's the one I probably prefer the most to come back, especially since Puzzle of Time is currently banned and expanded. This might be the one that might have a better shot at coming back. Searching your deck for any two cards via the effect of an item card is, is pretty insane. And right now with us having cards like the Stellar Wish Jirachi, we have a couple of ways to fulfill this multi-card effect that we have here. I'm just a really big fan of cards like this that function a little bit outside of the box and add a more dynamic element to the game. So like I said, I would be happy with something like Puzzle of Time coming back as well, but I think Pokey Jar Plus is probably the more likely of cans to come back. And if that's the case, that is perfectly fine with me. I would be totally happy with that as well. Coming in at number seven, we have Rescue Stretcher, a card that we didn't lose too long ago. You choose one, you put a Pokemon from your discard back into your hand, or you shuffle three Pokemon from your discard pile back into your deck. 
Now this is a card that I think at a glance I might consider excluding from this list because it does fill a similar role as a card we already have in format like Ordinary Rod, but I think Rescue Stretcher is different enough to warrant its inclusion here. So think if you're a deck like Mad Party, just as an easy example, Ordinary Rod is fine and all, but since you play no basic energies in your deck, it's definitely a strict, heavy downgrade from a card like Rescue Stretcher. This is just so much better than a card like Ornay Rod in these special energy-based decks. And I can't count how many times I've played Rescue Stretcher throughout its lifespan where I use this first effect. A lot of times you just need a very specific Pokemon there in the moment rather than having to shuffle three Pokemon back into your deck, then attempt to refine the exact one of those three you want still on the same turn. So Stretcher, I think this card could easily coexist along with Ornay Rod and in a lot of cases actually would be far superior in certain decks. Next up we have Power Spray. It says you may play this card during your opponent's turn when your opponent's Pokemon uses any Poke Power. Prevent all effects of that Poke Power. This counts as that Pokemon still using its Poke Power. And if you have two or less SP Pokemon in play, you can't play this card. So just a couple of quick things to point out here. Pokemon Powers, of course, would now be classified as abilities if printed today. So this would be an easy card to update. Of course, Pokemon SP no longer exist either. But again, you could easily integrate some other sort of downside to this card to keep in check, whether it be needing a certain amount of Pokemon of your own in play, or if you want to have other side effects like having to discard cards from your hand, whatever it might be, I think it would be very easy to still adapt this for a modern setting. But this is a card that I really think would lend the game a very unique flavor right now just because there aren't a really a whole lot of effects in Pokemon just in general as a game that allow you to interact on your opponent's turn. And overall, I'm okay with that. That is a common thing you see in some of the other popular card games, but I think it's one of the things that does make Pokemon a little bit unique. So while I'm not clamoring for a ton of these effects, I don't mind a few of these light power spray inching their way into the game just to make things a little bit more dynamic and make your opponent think before using some of their abilities. One of the easiest examples to illustrate how good Power Spray could be is if your opponent has a dead hand, they go to play Dedenne GX and you have the Power Spray ready to go, turn that thing off. Now they just benched a Dedenne GX for basically no reason and their hand is dead and they don't have a way to refill their hand. So Power Spray could definitely be very, very impactful and you know, probably pretty annoying too. So who knows, maybe this card will get reprinted and I will be very annoyed at its presence back in the game. But I definitely think cards like this just in general would make turns to make the game overall a lot more interesting than it currently is. So marking the halfway point on this countdown, we have Level Ball up next. So Level Ball says, search your deck for a Pokemon with 90 HP or less, reveal it and put it into your hand then shuffle your deck afterward. So Level Ball, this originally came out all the way back in Next Destinies and later down the road in Ancient Origins, if I remember correctly. But Level Ball saw a ton of play during its lifespan. Of course, the big thing that makes Level Ball cool is because it really specifically helps evolution decks, single prize decks, etc. And while we do have Quick Ball to find some of those low HP basics, 90 HP is actually kind of a big deal because you can actually grab stage ones a lot of the time with this. And you don't have to discard a card from your hand like in the case with Quick Ball. So I think this would definitely be more than welcome back into the game. You guys know I'm a big fan of helping evolution decks set up decks and level ball would be a nice first step at sort of making that happen. Getting into some of the spicier inclusions on this list, we have Dowsing Machine coming up next. This was one of these A-spec cards back during sort of the late stages of the black and white era of the game, but it says discard two cards from your hand, then put a trainer card from your discard pile back into your hand. So this is actually very similar to our honorable mention junk arm, but actually it's a little bit better because this was actually printed when items were called items. So when Dowsing Machine says trainer card, it's referencing all trainer cards, including supporters, including stadiums, making this actually a bit better than Junk Arm. Now, of course, the trade-off to a card like this is that you can only have one of these A specs in your deck, but all of the reasons that a card like Junk Arm is good also applies here at Dowsing Machine. This is gonna be your fifth switch, your fifth metal saucer, your fifth rare candy. And I think the limit to just one of these in particular would be really good for balancing reasons, even if it doesn't come back in the form of an A spec, just because I think cards like this are going to usually benefit more aggressive decks uh, and a lot of times evolution decks, especially stage two decks, don't have as many expendable cards that they want to discard at any given point. So again, limiting this to just one, I think will pretty evenly positively impact any potential deck that might appear. And much like with Dowsing Machine, we have another A-spec card coming in at number three, and that is going to be Computer Search. So much like with Dowsing Machine, we discard two cards from our hand, but then you search your deck for any card 
put it into your hand. I imagine I don't have to go into too much detail about why searching your deck for any card is a good thing. We have Red's Challenge in the current format, which does this exact effect, but it's in the form of a supporter card. So Red's Challenge has not seen really all too much play because of that. Having this effect on an item definitely would make it much more viable. Much like with Dowsing Machine, even if the A-Spec mechanic as a whole doesn't return, I would still be fine with them limiting you to one copy, even if it's just written in the normal text of the card there. Trading card games, while requiring skill to be good at, do still involve a good bit of variance, unfortunately. And cards like Computer Search that make your deck more consistent at pulling off their strategy, I think is only a good thing, really. I think the game's most interesting when you see two players doing exactly what they want to do in a given game or in a given turn, and then from there seeing who is going to emerge victorious on top. So again, Computer Search is going to be a card that's going to allow decks to run more smoothly, and I think it's only a good thing for the game if a card like this does make a return. Alrighty guys, we're getting down to the wire here. Our second to last pick we have is going to be Versus Seeker. So Versus Seeker says, put a support card from your discard pile into your hand. In some of Versus Seeker's very early printings, the card saw play, but not nearly the widespread play that it saw towards the end of its lifespan in some of its later printings, most notably in Phantom Forces and later as a secret rare again in Roaring Skies. Versus Seeker from that point on was basically a four of in almost every deck. And one of the things I love most about Versus Seeker is because it helps enable one of supporter cards. And what I mean by that is think of a card like Leon just as an example, or Team Yelgrunt. These are cards that you don't really want to run as four ofs, but a lot of times they are very impactful, especially in specific matchups. But the issue is there's not a great way at finding them whenever you need them. So with a format that has Versus Seeker, you can get them into the discard pile. And now later in the game, whenever you need the card exactly on the turn that you want it, you now have Versus Seeker to give you the flexibility at getting that card back out, or of course, just using a normal draw supporter or boss's orders, whatever it might be, and continuing as normal. And right now, Eldegoss V is really the only thing that will allow us to do something like that. But of course, Eldegoss is largely just going to be a one of in most decks, even though you technically can run for it, though I don't think anyone wants to. But on the other hand, Versus Seeker is a card that you can much more easily run for of, and it makes sense in a deck. So while running Verse Seeker does a lot of times hurt your early game consistency, as I know I've opened so many games where I have Versus Seekers in hand but no actual supporters, the amount of deck building options that enables you I think is worth the trade off and I think would be a very healthy thing to see come back into the Pokemon TCG. And so coming in at number one, and believe me, if this list was an actually ranked a list, this would still probably take the top spot. That's going to be rare candy. And I know you guys are probably scratching your head and are really confused because this video series is all about cards. I want to return to the game and we already have rare candy in the format. So what gives here? But don't let this imposter that we have in the current format fool you. That is not rare candy. How dare you stand where he stood? Rare Candy used to be a substantially more powerful card, but starting with the Heart Gold Soul Silver era of the game, the card got a huge nerf, and I think has been one of the reasons that Stage 2 and Evolution decks have struggled, I think in the formats in years ever since, with a couple of formats being some exceptions. But the original Rare Candy says, choose one of your basic Pokemon in play. If you have a Stage 1 or Stage 2 card that evolves from that Pokemon in your hand, Put that card on the basic Pokemon. This counts as evolving that Pokemon. And you might be thinking, how is this different than what we have? Earlier printings of rare candy for the longest time did not include the clause that we now have on the card that states you cannot play them on a Pokemon that was just put into play this turn. And that's a big difference because with this version of rare candy, we can actually rare candy immediately into these Pokemon. And that's one of the big issues that evolution and stage two decks have because it's like you need to survive just like one or two turns before you're allowed to evolve. And during that time, your low HP basics are very susceptible to getting knocked out. I mean, think if you're a Decidueye deck. I mean, this is a really good example for the current state of the game. You know, the early game is kind of the sketchiest part. And you're like, I just need to survive a turn to allow my Rowlets to safely stay in play before I can evolve into them and start walling against my opponent. But this older version of Rare Candy is going to vastly improve 
how your deck functions at its core. And if you've been watching this channel for a while now, you'll know that I'm a huge proponent of stage two decks. And I think that formats that enable those sorts of decks are usually historically the best formats in the game. So Rare Candy coming back in its original form, I think would drastically help improve the state of the game overall. Now, if I had things my way, I would probably add the exception that you cannot play Rare Candy on the very first turn of the game if you are the player going first, just to prevent things like Amistar coming into play turn one and weird, very oppressive combos. But anything after turn one of the game, I think should be fair game. And I think would be, again, just a huge boost to the game overall. So probably a little bit biased because of the name of the channel. Um, you should expect this card to make an appearance, I guess, and me, uh, you know, bend some of my own rules to uh, include this one. But again, despite this version of Rare Candy being similar to what we have now, the difference is massive enough, I think, to warrant its inclusion here on this list. And with that, we've reached the end of our countdown. These are my 10 item cards again, plus a couple of honorable mentions that I want to see make a return to the Pokemon TCG. And I know there's a lot of item cards that have existed over the years, so no doubt you're going to have some opinions of your own. I want to hear them down below in the comment section. And of course, guys, as you saw, both of our honorable mentions were picked by our patrons at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. So if you guys want to make it into future entries of this series, check us out on Patreon, get your voice heard, and get into our next video, especially since it also genuinely does help this channel in the process as well. But that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy this look into the past of the Pokemon TCG, as it's actually been some of the most fun I've had making videos in a while, to be honest. Of course, if you did, smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you can, consider supporting us, like I already mentioned, by becoming a patron, or you can pick up some merch from our online store at rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.